receive it. Give us ears to hear and hearts to uh, receive, Heavenly Father. We thank yes, you so Lord. much for this honor that you're giving us to be able to hear your word. We thank yes, you and we glorify you in Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. All right. Just going to preach a few minutes. This this morning I preached a little bit longer than I intended to this morning. So uh, hopefully, hopefully here this uh Hopefully this, this evening, man, we'll be a little bit more uh, uh, concise, maybe. And uh, But uh, Revelation chapter 14 is where I'm going to take my text from. And uh, uh, we left off at verse number 7 this morning, uh, Revelation 14, verse 7. And uh, it said... Uh, Talking about the uh, angel, amen, that proclaimed the gospel uh, there. And it said, and of course, this is his message. His message said, said this, saying with a loud voice, fear God. Fear God, amen. Uh, that, I mean, that, that's, a, that's a, a, a message in itself that man rejects today. That's right. That's right. Uh, you know, I, I've got a, I got a shirt that I wear, and uh, of course, on the front of the shirt, you know, is, is, you know, one of the first thing, great big letters, it says "Fear God." Matter of fact, it's this very scripture. Uh, I, I've had people, uh, people say, oh, "Brother, you're not supposed to fear God." I'm, you know, and I, I tell them, you know, I ask them, I say, "Well, do you believe the Bible?" Well, yeah, I believe the Bible. Well, this is the direct verse right out of the Bible. You know, you know fear God, give glory to Him. You know, and and so you you tell them, uh, uh, show them Scripture, even bring bring it right uh, out of God's Word, and they still they still reject it. Oh, but brother, we're, we're not supposed to fear God. Well, that's what the Bible says. Amen. Say the same thing. Just uh, I, I mean, just you know, just ver verbatim. Yeah, and and so I, I tell them I say, man, look, you know, you you uh, you uh, are not uh, are not correcting me. You correcting the Bible. Uh -huh. You know, I'm I'm just wearing a scripture, amen. And and uh, and the scripture says, fear God, amen. And this angel was preaching that message. This, I, I said that this angel was preaching that message. Fear God, just man, the fear of God, bro. Listen, man. The, the uh, uh, first angel uh, uh, preaches the, the first message that he preaches. Well, the first things that he says is fear God. And sadly, today the fear of God is a unpopular doctrine. People reject that doctrine. Pe people say things all oh, but brother, you know, God is my friend and. And you know me, me and me and Jesus, you know, we're just like that, you know. And He understands me, and you know, and I, I'm, I'm not supposed to be afraid of God. I'm not supposed to fear God. Well, the, then you, you're not obeying what God's word says. Amen. It says fear God. Amen. And it's it's a it's a un, unpopular message. Amen. And uh, a very unpopular doctrine in this in this. Uh, uh, this uh, uh, apostate world, this apostate, <coughs> excuse me, apostate church, amen. And but yet the uh, fear of God is still a fundamental doctrine of the Bible. You're supposed to fear God, amen. Uh, Proverbs nine and verse ten says, "The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom," and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. Amen? And so there can be no true conversion to Christ without the fear of God. Amen? Proverbs 16 and 6 says, By the fear of the Lord men depart from evil. Amen? And, and so in, in, this, in this hour, uh, the God that is preached from behind the pulpits to people uh, and, and the sinners alike, for the most part, is absolutely impossible to fear. 
they preach messages like that God is tolerant and that we should be tolerant and and that uh, God uh, uh, you know accepts uh, accepts people and, and, and accepts you the way that you are and 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 uh, you know repentance you know just you know basically it's a one time thing one time ordeal you know you you repent and then God's grace takes over from there and so 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 uh, uh, this uh, God that is preached from behind the pulpits today in our churches today brother is impossible for you to fear I mean he's he's just a he's just a good old buddy a good old understanding buddy and he is tolerant and he is ex and he is acceptable and accepting of all things but that's not the God of the Bible right I said that's not the God of the Bible and and uh, the God of the Bible it, it, it is is a fearsome God. You need to be afraid. Amen. And it's not just a healthy respect. Jesus said this in Luke 12 and 5. He says, But I'll forewarn you. I'll forewarn you whom you shall fear. Fear him, which after he had killed, had power to cast into hell. Yea, I say unto you, fear him. That's what Jesus said. Amen. Jesus said that of his own, own father, fear him. Amen. That's able to cast your body and your soul, both of them, together into hell fire. Jesus said, fear, fear him. Fear God. Jesus said that. Amen. And it's more than just, um, guys, look. look it's, it's more than just a healthy respect. If, you know, he's referring to the fact that God can kill your body and your soul and put them both in hell fire. And I know that's an unpopular message. And you preach that today, people think you're crazy. You know, oh, brother, you're not supposed to be preaching that. That runs the sinner off. Well, it should make the sinner consider his past. <laughs> it should make the sinner understand that there is a day of reckoning coming that he won't be able to escape. Now, if, if, if he runs, that's on him. Amen. But as the saying goes, the sinner can run, but he cannot hide. Amen? Because there is a day of, of reckoning coming. And I'm, I'm saying that, that the faithful preacher is the man who truly unveils the nature of God. Amen? <clears throat> and he preaches and he preaches the Christ to whom that man must give an account to. Then it says... Fear God and give glory to Him. Give glory to Him. Amen? Give glory to God. Amen? And uh, uh, give, give glory to Him for the hour of His judgment has come. Amen? That's what the Scripture says. For the hour of His judgment has come. And, and, and worship Him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the foundations of water. Uh, A.W. Tozer said, always and always, God must be first. The gospel in its scriptural context puts the glory of God first and the salvation of man second. Amen? And to give God glory is to render to Him what's rightfully His. Amen? What's rightfully His. 1 Corinthians 6 and verse 20 says, For ye are bought with the price... Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Amen? It belongs to God. Uh, Pastor, what, what are you preaching? I'm, I'm saying that this message that these angels were preaching is the message of obedience. Amen? It's the message of holiness. Amen? And again, the message of holiness is hated. Uh, man, it's, 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 it's an absolutely hated message. People hate the message of holiness. I mean, if you want to make a group of Christians mad, or pew warmers mad, churchians mad, all you got to do is just start preaching on holiness. Amen, somebody. The popular theology of, of the day teaches that grace, that grace frees us 
uh, from our obligation to fulfill the moral law. Amen. And that, I mean that that's what that that's the that's the message of, 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 of grace today that we that we're not bound to the moral laws because of grace. And just as Wesley said this in his day, he said the the antinomiums erroneously say this that a preacher ought not to exhort to good works, not unbelievers, because it's hurtful, and not believers because it's needless. So he, he so they, the uh, and the uh, antinomian gospel is, you know, don't 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 preach works, man, because it's just useless. It scares the sinner, and and to the saint, it's just, it's just needless. And the false gospel. Uh, makes a, a little or no claim upon the sinner's life. But Jesus said this. Jesus said this in Matthew 10 and 38. He that taketh not up his cross and followeth after me, Jesus said, is not worthy of me. And notice why, why, why men, men ought to give God glory. The Bible says that there in verse 7, it says, for the hour of his judgment is come. For the hour of His judgment is come. Amen. The, the everlasting gospel always contains an urgent call to prepare to meet God in judgment. Amen. And then, then there's a exposing and a condemning of false religion. Amen. Verse 8 says, And there followed another angel saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen that great city, because she made all the nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. Amen? And you see, in the Bible, Babylon was uh, always represents spiritual confusion. Babylon always represents the false religion. Babylon always uh, represents a counterfeit Christianity, that which is that which is not real, amen, or false. And so it's, it's, it's uh, difficult to exalt that which is right, to proclaim that which is, is, is right, amen, before that we expose that which is wrong. And so, so how, can we, how can we proclaim truth without understanding error? Amen, and that's what this angel did. Proverbs 28 and 5 says, Evil men understand not judgment. Evil men understand not judgment. The true gospel preacher will address the deceptions of the day. He, he, won't, he, won't, he won't just mess with them and try to get along with them and try to incorporate them, you know, into the body and, you know, just, you know, just get along with them. Amen. A, a, a true preacher ain't going to do that. A true gospel preacher is not going to do that. Amen. But he's going to address the deceptions of the day. Uh, instead of meshing with the Catholic Church, like what so many of the, of the, uh, uh, of the uh, TV preachers are doing now, they're meshing with them. They're trying to, they're, they're actually calling the Pope Father and, 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 and and calling the, the Catholic Church mother? <laughs> uh, uh, come on, guys. I mean, how, how big of an erroneous, I mean, how much more of a wolf do we need? Amen? Do, do, do we need to tattoo wolf on somebody's forehead? Amen? Before that we understand. Listen, a, a true gospel preacher will address the deceptions of the day, and he'll point out the evils of Rome as as well as the as, as the era of modern day evangelical Christianity here in America, and I know it's unpopular. Amen. This has always been the apostolic pattern. Notice, notice in Acts chapter twenty, Paul's confession. He says this. Acts chapter twenty, verse verse thirty thirty one says, "Also of your own selves." shall men arise speaking perverse things to draw you away disciples after them. Therefore watch and remember that 
By the space of three years, I ceased not to warn everyone night and day with tears. He said, man, I, 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 warned, I ceased not. I warned you guys night and day with tears. Amen. That's Paul's confession. And then also notice... Notice that uh, of the warnings of hellfire. Now I understand this is a very unpopular message, man. People hear hellfire and they get depressed. They get five shades of depression. You know, oh, we don't want to hear it, brother. It just makes us feel bad. Well, it should, amen. Uh, it, it's, it, it, the message of hellfire is not to is not is not to in, invoke a lot of happiness, amen. It's, it's not to invoke depression either. It's to invoke what's called repentance. It's to invoke what's called a soul searching. Amen. To see whether or not that you're in the faith. Here in verse 9, and if you read verse 9, 10, and verse 11, it says, it says this. Uh, in verse 9 it says, And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, and notice all, all three of these guys are tag teaming, man. They're, they're preaching. Amen. Say with a, a loud voice, if any man worship the beast in his image and receive his mark in his forehead or, or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence and the presence and the presence and the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment, the smoke of their torment, the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night who worship the beast and his image, who, who, whoever receiveth the mark of his name. Whoever receives the mark of his name. But it said fire and brimstone. I mean, I can't tell you how many times a day on social media that I don't get rebuked. I get some kind of message. I get some kind of rebuke or something by somebody. Some, somebody will come up and say something, you know. Even people are dumb enough to say things like, well, you know, God's judgment is already passed. He's already judged. He already made his judgment. That's all right in the past. And I'm, I'm sorry. What is he going to do? About this, Amen. See, see, it's uh, you know, uh, it says talks about the fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels in the presence of of the of the of of, of, of the Lamb. You know, I, guys, Pastor, what do you guys? Listen, I, I can't tell you how many times, how many times that I get rebuked or I get I get corrected huh, by well-meaning churchians or well-meaning. Uh, 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 people that don't even go to, that don't even believe in going to church. People who don't believe in, in the message of the doctrine of hellfire. And uh, these uh, these uh, there, there, there's all sorts of of universalists out there believing universalism and and just I mean that's that's just an absolute doctrine from hell. But uh, you see, hell is another unpopular subject that people reject. Amen. And and uh, you know, of course, not you know yet. Uh, not only here, but in other places uh, in the New Testament, God's messengers were never afraid to proclaim the existence of hell. Uh, you know. Uh, Pastor, what do you say? I'm saying that we cannot preach the gospel if we refuse to warn men and, and, and declare God's judgment, declare God's judgment against all sin. In fact, in fact, in fact, avoiding God's judgment is the mark of a false prophet. Avoiding the subject of hell, avoiding the subject of, of judgment is the mark of a false prophet. Jeremiah 23 and, 
And in 17 it says, they, they say still unto them that despise me, the Lord hath said, yet shall, uh, uh, ye shall have peace. And they say unto everyone that walketh after the imagination of his own heart, no evil shall come upon you. False prophets. I, man, I tell you, I, I can't tell you how many times that pastors and, and, and preachers have preached from the pulpit and, 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 and told on social media, man, God's not going to judge anyone. There's no judgment coming. God is a God of love and acceptance. And and you know, this this kind of judgment, you know, that that all these holiness people are preaching. Man, these people are just fanatics and they're just legalistic. And, uh, and Guys, when they start coming to you like that, just know that's a sign of a false prophet. That's a, that's a Jeremiah, uh, that, that's a Jeremiah 23 and verse 17 that's talking to you. Amen? Amen? And, and so just know that as a Jeremiah 23. When it starts saying things, oh, God's not going to judge you. God, God's got nothing but love for you, baby. Nothing but love for you. I, I, that's all. God's got nothing but love for you. No evil shall come upon you. Oh, yeah, it will. Somebody say amen. And then finally, the response. Amen? The response. Amazingly, the, all those angels were preaching. All that emotion, loud voice, and all that warning, and all that, we see no response. We see no response. No response. So this kind of debunks the this false concept that teaches if 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 it's God, then someone will respond. If you're preaching the message of God, brother, somebody is going to respond. Amen. But, but you know, if, if if that's true, if that's true, then why didn't anybody respond while these angels were preaching? Amen, Pastor Love. But I, I believe I believe that it teaches us another very important concept, another very important principle. That we must realize that men are never prepared to receive grace until they first see their sin rightly. Because as long as they're de defending their, their, their sin, as long as they're defending themselves and they're defending their sin, period, then they're not ready for grace. Grace ain't coming. Grace ain't going to be... I, I, I don't care how many people say, well, you know... It's, we're not under the law. We're under grace. And so the grace is going to speak up. Uh, no. If, uh, until men see their sin rightly, grace ain't coming. Amen. Charles Finney said this. Charles Finney said, Evermore the law must prepare the way for the gospel to overlook this, uh, this in instructing souls is almost certain to result in false hope, the introduction of a false standard of Christianity, of, of Christian experience, and, and to fill churches with false converts. Amen? John Bunyan said this, the man who does not know the nature of, of the law cannot know the nature of sin. And he who does not know the nature of sin cannot know the nature of the Savior. Charles Spurgeon said, they will never accept grace until they tremble before a just and holy law. Guys, it's God's word that says that this is the everlasting gospel. That this message right here being, being preached by these angels, it says that this is the everlasting gospel. That's what they're preaching. Right? It says that they're preaching the everlasting gospel. If you want to know what the everlasting gospel is, the everlasting gospel, 
you know, just read what these guys preach. They preach the everlasting God. That's what the Bible refers to it as. Oh, brother, what's the gospel? Well, all you got to do is flip over. Revelation 14. I mean, it's not too hard. It's not rocket science. Flip over here. Revelations uh, uh, 14 and read verses 6 all the way down through verse 12. God says that's the everlasting gospel. Some folks say something like this. Well, brother, you call this, you call this the gospel? Huh? You call this the what they preach? You call this the gospel, brother? You call this the gospel? And there's no and there's no mention of atonement. Uh, there's no mention uh, of forgiveness. You call this the gospel, and there's and there's no mention of this of love. Where's the love message at? Hey, wait a minute, brother. Where's the love message at? Where, brother love, where's the love message at? And what you can't call this the gospel. The Bible calls it the everlasting gospel. No doubt these aspects are essential, amen. We, you know, uh, to the gospel. You can't deny that. Amen. But but the first oracle of the gospel declaration is to repent. That's the that's the first that's the first oracle period. Repent. And and, and, and if God, Pastor Woody, I'm saying that if man fails to acknowledge their sin and agree with God, then 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 it's then it's it's it's, it's it, it, you know it's it's absolutely futile to move forward. Amen. I mean, you you can preach all the message of love that you want to, but that's just a cool fact about God. It does the sinner absolutely no good. The message of love does the sinner no good. It's like, oh, but brother, it makes him feel. It makes him feel good. It, may, it makes him feel welcome. It, may, it, may, it makes him. May, well, it makes him feel all right. Amen. But see, they need to be ashamed. Nothing wrong with shame. Amen. Nothing wrong with sorrow. Amen. Somebody. They need to be ashamed. We, we don't. We don't preach a gospel to a sinner that makes the sinner feel good. It makes him feel wonderful about his sin. It makes him feel wonderful about his life of sin. Amen? Amen? When in fact that he's going to a devil's hell, and when in fact that if we continue, if, 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 if the church continues to preach a, a message of, of, uh, of, well, brother, you know, grace, is, you know, it's all, you know, we, we don't have to talk about hell. We, we, we you know, we didn't let, we just let God deal with them. Well, God is dealing with them. Amen? God's dealing with them through the preacher that preaches the Word of God and wish he had to get some angels to do it. Amen? He had to get the angels to do this. So the first oracle of the Gospel is the declaration to repent. Amen? And if, and if man failed to acknowledge their sin... If man fails to agree with God, amen, if, you know, you, you can't, you can't, uh, a sinner is not going to uh, appreciate love. They're not going to appreciate the love of God until they repent. A sinner is not going to appreciate the love of God until they repent. Otherwise, they're still the children of wrath on the way to the devil's hell, feeling pretty good that God is love. But yet, they're still on the way to hell. Huh. Amen? With, with, with the church pat on the back. Pastor, what is, I'm saying, oh God, guys, this I'm saying that if they refuse the diagnosis, then they are not prepared for the remedy. So hence, if I if I stand in the if I stand in the in, in the public with a pure heart preaching, thou shalt not. 
Amen. God calls it the gospel. This is a lot different from what we hear today. Amen. But are we surprised about that? Amen. Are, are we willing to be used of God to utter the true gospel message? Amen. The true gospel message, the true gospel message of, uh, praise God, of, of repentance and faith and walking in Christ, walking in God, walking with, with God. Father, right now, Lord, I, I just pray, oh God, we could be indicted in, in, in with the fact that, that we are 